All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Notice how you feel. It's a great day. Isn't the sun is shining here in Northwest Arkansas and uh, maybe some snow will be melting and the temperature is rising. The snow is lowering the sun and the, the temperature is rising. Breathe that in. Mm, having, you know, the 50s soon, even the 40s. Oh, that feels good. So the chat box is still open. And if you would like to share something good going on, something that lifts your spirits when you think about it, I am lifted up when I think about Chrissy made a snow person <laughs> and the picture of it she sent me. <laughs> just, it's just, you know lifts the spirit so breathe into something and if you'd like to share it if it's worth sharing i'm having i have my uh, setup here and my keyboard is far away but if it's worth sharing type it in your um, chat box for us to see as we breathe into our hearts and today another special thing we have bonnie o'boyle and she's going to be talking about the peace portal 2022 See, she's excited. She was messengering me at 5.45 a.m. this morning. She is so excited. <laughs> so what? breathe that into the day. Breathe that into your heart. Breathe that into your mind and soul. And Brittany, Marcia's daughter, is going to be taking the bar exam. Can you imagine being a mother? whose daughter is taking the bar exam. How exciting is that? Oh, there's a little anticipatory uh, anxiety, but there's also a wonderful, wonderful feeling. That is fantastic. Now we're going to keep, keep this, this flow of, of vibration, this, this feeling, this knowing in the true sense of the word all is well as we breathe into our heart now and you may close your eyes if that helps you to get centered a little more in the heart space for we're going to hold in our hearts one of the harsh realities of this day and time and it's been with us for many years but all those who have loved ones or are debilitated, affected by addiction, those who have loved ones and their lives are so changed by addiction those who are in the midst of their own experience with addiction. Let us just hold all of them in our hearts. And we fill it up with courage. Think of a time when you were courageous. And strength, something that you've done that just made you feel so strong inside and all around. When I need this, I think about the times when I hiked the Grand Canyon and how strong and mm, I felt and how pleased to be able to do that. And we hold that kind of strength in our hearts for all those, those who have lost loved ones to this addiction in one way or another. We lift them into that space of knowing the wisdom of the ages to guide them all and hold them all and comfort them. And we release. And so it is. Now shake it off, <laughs> just let that go. Breathe into the heart, breathe into the heart space of love and light.
All right. I'm going to screen share our first song today. So take a breath. Breathing out. And the words are there for you. Breathe in with the words and let them fall upon you where they may. Here and now, in the depths of my spirit, right now, rolls a melody sweeter than song. In celestial light strains, it unceasingly falls on my soul like an infinite calm. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Come and hear from the spirit of love. Sweep over my spirit forever I pray in fathomless pillows of love what a treasure I have in this wonderful peace buried deep in the heart of my soul so secure that no power can mine it away while the years of eternity roll peace peace wonderful peace come and hear from the spirit of love sweep over my spirit Forever I pray in fathomless billows of love. Peace, peace. Now next verse. I'm resting right now in this wonderful peace. Resting sweetly in spirit's control For I'm kept from all dangers by night and by day And glory is flooding my soul Peace, peace, wonderful peace Come and hear from the spirit of love sweep over my spirit forever I pray in fathomless billows of love sweep over sweep over my spirit forever I pray in fathomless billows of love Notice how you feel. This is from yesterday, Saturday, the daily word, inner peace. Mm. Say this affirmation with me, if you will. I give thanks for the peace of God within. One more time, I give thanks for the peace of God within. When I contemplate peace, I feel my oneness with God and the quiet strength it gives me. I see a tranquil lake, a gorgeous sunset, or a mountain stream and give thanks for the beauty around me. Feeling peaceful, I am relaxed and calm. I glow from within and feel serenity in my soul. 
I breathe easier, remain positive, and always give thanks. I'm mindful of my place in the world. I'm mindful of my place in the world. Peace is mine to remember, to imagine, and to create. I'm a child of God inspired by the beauty of creation, calm and strong through my oneness with God. Mine is a peace I trust in, rely upon, and give thanks for. I'm truly blessed. And our scriptures from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's sing another song about peace. It's easy to catch on to. Open to infinite love, I know peace. Open to infinite love, I am. Yes, I am. I am peace. Let's do that again. Open to infinite love, I know peace. Open to infinite love, I am. Yes, I am. I am peace. Open to infinite love, I know peace. Open to infinite love I am Yes, I am I am peace Open it again Open to infinite love I know peace Open to infinite love I am Yes, I am. I am peace. I'm peace. Take a breath. Peace. Notice how you feel. Hmm. Thank you. We're going to do one more song, or I'm going to do one more song. And then we'll have Bonnie take us to the peace portal. Notice how you feel. Be aware of the body sitting, the heart beating, the breath. With each beat of my heart, I relax, I let go into peace, into peace. With each beat of my heart, I relax, I let go into peace, into peace. Nothing I need to be, nothing I need to do. I'll just let it be. I'll just let it be. 
With each beat of my heart, I relax, I let go into peace, into peace. Everything I need is here, everything I need to feel. Everything is here for me. I just let it be. I just let it be. With each beat of my heart, I relax. I let go into peace. into peace mm -hmm. take a moment and a very conscious breath notice how you feel as we invite Bonnie to bring us the portal, Peace Portal 2022. All right, Bonnie, I believe it's you now. Okay. Hello, all you love lights. I am Bonnie O'Boyle. If you don't know who I am, I think most everybody here does. And I am here today to help you to find your way to have more peace and joy in 2022. And I want to start off by a little bit of bragging. I wanted to say that I have been going to Unity for 23 years, most of those at this very Unity. And for 10 of those years, I was the YOU sponsor, the Youth of Unity sponsor with all of the teenagers. And do you know what that means about me? It means I'm a personal growth junkie. <laughs> because we love to grow here at Unity, don't we? We have classes and book studies and conferences and rallies and silent retreats and all kinds of amazing growth experiences. And all of that has come together to make me the person that I am today. And today I'm gonna share like the best of the best of the things that I've learned over these years with Unity. And when I was thinking about all of the growth I've done, I, uh, it really hit home to me to talk about an experience that I had last year at a silent retreat with Catherine. And often when I'm going to have a silent retreat, I will ask myself uh, to, or I'll ask spirit the night before the silent retreat to give me what's called a teaching dream. And a teaching dream is just a dream that gives me some content to kind of help with my growth and my um, introspection during that retreat. And I did get the gift of a teaching dream that night. And in this dream, me and my kids, um, my kids were about teenage years or young adult in the dream. And we were all in a swimming pool and we were splashing each other and laughing and playing and having a great time. And my son got out of the pool and he went and sat in a lounge chair beside the pool. And he said, oh, there's lots of noise over there. I, I wouldn't want to go over there. It's, it sounds terrible. And I was like, I couldn't hear what he was hearing from the pool. So I got out of the pool and went over and I listened closely. And there was a um, lot of crashing and banging and screaming coming from the guest house. And I knew that my parents and step parents were in the guest house. So I decided to go investigate. Now the noise has died down by the time I got to the door, but when I opened the door, my dad and stepdad were sitting on one couch and my mom and stepmom were sitting on another couch and they were talking through things calmly, but the entire house was destroyed. There was broken glass everywhere, shelves were turned over. It looked like that they had had a knockdown, drag out fight. But on first glance, none of them seemed to be injured. So I said to them, none of this matters. All that matters is that everybody is safe and we all, everybody is okay. Nobody got hurt. Okay. And then my dream ended. And so I was 
thinking about the dream and I realized that uh, emotion is represented by water in dreams often. And the emotion in the water was happy. And my best friend, Crystal Joy, reminded me that it is also about spirituality. And I know houses are about like ourself and our beingness, but I hadn't come across broken glass in a dream. So I looked it up on my dream app and it was about uh, an event that has destroyed you or broken you. And I was like, hmm, there's nothing really negative going on in my life. Nothing's destroyed me. So I did not really understand why there was broken glass in my dream. And I went on to the silent retreat kind of pondering this. And I'm sitting in the silent retreat, chanting Om Namah Shivaya with all the other people at the retreat. And tears of gratitude started streaming out of my eyes because I realized I was in the same room with Catherine Gindling, who was my son's Sunday school teacher when he was little. And with Mary Lightheart, who was my daughter's Sunday school teacher when she was little. And with Marion Bolin, who was both of their school nurses the whole time they were growing up. And I realized that unity had been the pool that had protected my kids and I from the broken glass, which represented my shattered childhood because of the things I had been through as a child. And that didn't get passed on to my kids and it protected me and my kids being at unity from all of the negativity that could have been passed on to another generation. It, disrupted a family pattern and helped us to have peace and joy and so much connectivity um, being in the YOU experience together. So all of that um, has culminated into me being who I am, right? And so much so that I've become a therapist. So I help other people on their growth path. And what I find is that the science of psychology and the things that are taught at Unity dovetail perfectly together. It's amazing. I'm out there teaching like Unity principles to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis every day, um, all day long. And I wanted to kind of explain to you a little bit of how the science is supporting the things we're doing because it's kind of an interesting new layer on what the Unity principles are about. And the first thing I want to talk about is meditation. Um, I love to meditate. I go to every silent retreat I can um, get to um, and get time off work for, but I also, using the app that I use, have meditated over 2,500 hours using that app, and so I really do love to meditate, and I think it's super important to meditate every day, and I do meditate on a daily basis, and I've been doing that for years. Now, the science behind that is so cool because you know, if you go to the gym and you work out and you're lifting weights, you can see the fat getting smaller and the muscles getting bigger, right? Uh, as you work out, but we can't really see the changes that happen when we meditate. But on a brain scan, after six weeks of meditation, our prefrontal cortex grows. And that's the logical part of our brains. Our anterior cingulate cortex also thickens. That's the part of our brain that holds us back from impulsivity so that we don't say that thing that we want to say, but we really shouldn't say to that other person, you know, we've all been in those kind of experiences, right? And also the amygdala shrinks. Now the amygdala is where our flight, fight, or freeze is going on. And that's where our logical brain shuts down and we can't think straight when we're faced with a stress in our life. So literally you get better at navigating life and not life's trials when you meditate every day because your brain has the capacity to handle those kind of things better. So that's a really good excuse for meditating on a daily basis. Now, a lot of people, how many, first of all, how many people here, raise your hand if you're a daily meditator? Do we have lots of daily meditators here? I think that probably more in unity than in most other groups of people, for sure, we have daily meditators. But I've talked to lots of people about meditating daily, and the most common reason I get from people out there as to why they have not continued a meditation practice is they say, I tried to shut off my brain, but I just can't get my brain to be quiet. And I want you to know it's not about that. It's about every time that you notice your brain chattering and you bring your attention back to the present moment, it's like a bicep curl for your brain. And that is what is making your brain grow. And that is what is rewiring the neural pathways. Because usually when we chatter, we chatter about things we're stressed about. 
when you bring your attention back to the present moment, you're training your brain over and over again to relax about the things that you're stressed out about. So we're going to do a little meditation demonstration right now. So I would like you guys to empty your hands if you have something in your hands and settle into your chair and get comfy. And if it's comfortable for you to put your hands on your lap, palm up, that, that would be also beneficial. I'm going to ask you to take a deep cleansing breath. And then blow out all of the tension of your day and your week. And breathe in one more time. And as you breathe in, no notice your body. And when you breathe out, blow out all the tension that's in your body. And you can kind of wiggle in your chair to get all of that tension out so that you can be fully relaxed. And on a third deep breath, deep, slow breath, Relax the place behind your eyes. And then I want you to just allow your breath to fall into its natural, normal breathing. And just put your attention on the feeling of the air coming into and going out of your body. And you might notice this at the tip of your nose, if you're breathing through your nose, and you might even notice the air is cooler when it comes in and warmer when it goes out. You can also notice your chest or belly rising and falling. Whatever makes it easiest for you to put your attention on your breathing. And we're just going to pay attention to our breathing for a few breaths. Notice where your thoughts are, whether or not you are able to keep your focus on your breathing is irrelevant because if your mind wandered, you can now just gently bring it back to your breathing. And that is helping to train your brain towards more peace. Next, I want you to put your attention on the palms of your hands. And when you put your full focus on the palms of your hands, you might notice a buzzing or a tingling or heat or cold or a magnetic or heavy feeling there. Or you might not notice anything. No matter what your experience is, keep your focus on the sensation you feel in the palms of your hands as we take a few more deep breaths together. Where is your attention? Did it wander to your thoughts? That's okay. The brain thinks that's what it does. Bring your attention back to the palms of your hands and the sensation you feel there. And as you put your attention on your palms, take one last deep cleansing breath. And at the end of the out breath, you may open your eyes.
notice how you feel. Because for me, meditation is the doorway into that peace portal we're talking about today. And mindfulness also can get me there. And mindfulness is being in the present moment. So our brain wants to think about the future and worry about the future and think about the past and have regrets about the past. But the body is in this present moment. And so we can use our senses, our four senses, to get into this now moment, paying attention to a beautiful sunset. Right now in your environment where you're in, listen and listen for the quietest sound you can hear for just a moment. So it doesn't matter what sounds you heard, it's the listening that gets you into the present moment taking a bite of cheesecake or something really delicious and really noticing the texture and being present with your sense of taste. Feeling how your palms feel or the difference between where your clothing is and where your arm is and how that feels different. All of our senses can bring us into this present moment. Smelling a rose can bring you into this present moment. So stop and smell the roses. So these are ways that we are training our brain towards more peace. I always like to say that having a brain is like having a puppy. If you don't train your puppy, it's going to pee on your carpet. If you don't train your brain, it's going to pee on your thoughts. And Reverend Annette calls that pissosity, right? When, when our brain pees on our thoughts, then we have pissosity and we, we feel grouchy and grumpy and we think the world is in a good place, but it's a beautiful place to live in this world. And all we have to do is really pay attention and then we know. So that is the law of mind action, right? That's unity principle number three. And Annette gave us a great affirmation. I don't remember it, but thank you for um whatever it was a great affirmation <laughs> with our daily word but we do that we do that in our songs too it's not just in our affirmations and our prayers that that we are in our affirmative pray prayers that we're changing our thoughts and changing our world it's songs are a prayer twice prayed and the songs that Annette shared with us were very affirming of our peace and that's what we're after today that's what we're going for right we're going for the gusto of peace and joy, because that's what you deserve. So when we start noticing our thoughts and observing our thoughts, we notice these things called automatic negative thoughts. I'll call them ants. Automatic negative thoughts are ants in our head and they run around. And we have ants that catastrophize things. You hear some news and you're like, oh no, that means this and this and this is gonna happen too. We don't know that this and this and this is gonna happen too. We're gonna suffer while we're waiting to see if this and this and that happens. But we can, we can, change those automatic negative thoughts. We get into thoughts about, oh, oh, those people are talking to each other and they're looking at me. I bet they're talking about me and they don't like me. No, they're not. They're talking about their own stuff. They don't care. <laughs> like They're not even good thinking about you. But our brains will do that to us. What there's the word, what if, what if this happens? What if that happens? You know, you can watch the news and get a bad case of the what ifs, right? But all of that is just automatic negative thoughts. And sometimes our thoughts get so thick that we can't see through them. And they seem like our reality, especially when something really negative is getting our attention when we have contrast in our lives. And so we, we can get past this by doing something called cognitive diffusion, because when our thoughts are fused to us, we can't see past them. And I first learned about cognitive diffusion from Annette, although I'm not sure if she knows that that's what it was called, what she was doing, but she came back from a silent retreat saying, I learned this coolest thing where I observe my thoughts I, and I label them. I, I label them as planning thoughts or worrying thoughts or, you know, angry thoughts or whatever. And that is a way to get us some space from our thoughts when our thoughts are really fused to us. Another cognitive diffusion technique that we use in counseling is using the qualifier just before our thoughts. So if I invited my friend to hang out with me and she said she was busy and I'm having the thought she doesn't like me anymore, I can, I can tell myself, 
I'm just having the thought that she doesn't like me anymore. That's not what it means. You know, I'm just having the thought that the, the snow is never going to go away and I'm going to be stuck at home forever. I, I'm just having the thought that COVID is a horrible thing that's happened to, to this world. I'm just having all these thoughts, right? And then we get some space from our thoughts. Then we can come back in and do something called reframing our automatic negative thoughts. And we do that with unity principle number, principle number four with our affirmations and prayers and music, right? We change our thoughts to uh, feel better for us. Or as Abraham Hicks likes to say, reach for a thought that feels better. You know, reach for a thought that helps you. If, if you're worrying about your finances, which is a big worry for a lot of people. I'm not sure how I'm going to pay the bills. You can, you, you're not going to believe the thought, I'm a millionaire and I don't have any financial problems. Your brain is not going to buy that, but you can go up to that next thought that feels a little better and say, I have a roof over my head right now and things always seem to work out for me. So in this now moment, I'm okay. And that's where I'm going to stay because all worry exists in the future and all regret exists in the past. So the present moment is the safest place to hang out. Our brain sometimes isn't a safe place for us to hang out. It really disturbs us sometimes. I always like to tell my, my brain, thank you for your commentary, but I'm driving the bus, get in the back seat, you know? And so our brains are gonna comment at us because every person that comes on this planet is issued a brain and every brain shatters. By the way, speaking of reframes, we at Unity have the ultimate reframe that we can use for ourselves. And it's a combination of Unity principles, number one and number two, right? God is everywhere present and has our back. God is always looking out for our good. And we have that divinity within us. So we're co-creating with God. So that's good motivation to turn our thoughts positive, right? I got into a car wreck one time. It was a pretty significant car wreck. And I, the EMT asked if I had any pain. I said I had pain in my neck. So they decided it would be best to put me on a board and take me on the straight board in the ambulance to the hospital to get x-rays. And I'm sitting here on a gurney in the hallway thinking, oh, I don't have anybody here to help me. I'm all alone. This is terrible. And then I remembered God is always with me. And I started singing, I am so blessed. I am so blessed. You guys know that song, right? People looked at me like I was weird sitting on a straight board waiting for my x-rays in the hospital hall, but I didn't care that they thought I was weird. God was with me. I wasn't alone and I could handle that situation because I wasn't alone and God was always there and had my, my highest good in divine order. I haven't talked yet about unity principle number five, where we take this truth we know out into the world, we make a difference, right? As it turns out, when we do that, it is good for our mental health. Isn't that cool? So at unity, we have plurk days, play and work combined into plurk. And um, on those days, we get green time and green time is time out in nature. Time in nature is good for our mental health. We also get a lot of exercise. I think some of us get a little bit sore after all the work we do on the unity grounds when we have those plurk days, but that exercise floods our brains with good endorphins and dopamine and all kinds of feel good chemicals that we can ride into our day to have a happier day. So exercise is so good for our mental health. The YOUers and I did ridiculous amounts of service projects because they had to have service hours to be eligible to go to rallies. And I've We've planted hundreds of trees with the Illinois River Watershed Project. Um, we've picked up trash on rivers, at parks, at Bike Blues and Barbecue, at, uh, we even adopted a park one time. Um, so we, we've picked up lots and lots of trash in places and done just lots of service for the church and helping out um, around the church. If you notice the rock pathways in the front, um, that was partially done by a YOU project. And the, uh, we were heavily involved in making the labyrinth as well. So when I go on the unity grounds, I get this sense of just wonderful um, peace and, and pride that I got to be a part of creating these beautiful grounds that we have. 
And so when we do random acts of kindness, when we do service, it helps our mental health. It turns out that it raises your mood to do something for somebody else. And I'll share with you guys my very favorite random act of kindness I like to do. I love to leave quarters in candy machines at grocery stores and restaurants and not turn the knob and get the toy, toy or candy because in my pocket, it's just a quarter. But in that candy machine, it's a jackpot for some kid that's going to come across it someday, right? And I'll just leave just feeling all giddy from leaving a quarter. And I think that's a really good, you know, purchase for a quarter to feel giddy, right? Okay. Also, the YOUers taught me about the power of playfulness. And we did a lot of lessons that were playful and I taught them through play. And at YOU rallies, we were playing and running around and having so much fun and laughter. It was ridiculous. Um, and it made me think of a TED talk that I saw by Jane McGonigal. Jane McGonigal is a game designer and she did a TED talk about the power of playfulness and how games help us. And in this talk, she talks about a study that was done with hospice workers where they talked about the five biggest regrets of people on their deathbeds. The first regret that they talked about is that people said that they wished that they worked less. The opposite of work is play, right? So when we play, we're actually helping ourselves to not have regrets on our deathbed. The second biggest regret of the dying was that they wished they had spent more time with friends. Now you can play games by yourself, but oftentimes when we play games, we're playing with friends. I mean, I love getting together with Benny and Crystal and playing Sparkle and we, we, all, we all talk smack about, oh, I'm gonna win this time or whatever. You know, we have lots of fun playing games together, but we can also connect remotely with family through games online. And I, uh, lots of people do that with words with friends or, or different kinds of games so that we can connect with other people and spend more time with our family and friends. Uh, the third regret of the dying is that I wish that I had let myself be happier. And Jane talks about an East Carolina University study where um, they tested whether they, they gave some people pharmaceuticals and they had some people play video games. And they found that video games outperformed pharmaceuticals for depression and anxiety. I thought that was a pretty telling study. She said the fourth regret of the dying was that they wish they had been more true to themselves. And there was a Stanford University study she talked about that said that uh, they had people use this idealized avatar and playing games with this avatar made them have more courage, ambition, and be more goal committed. And the fifth regret of the dying was that they had wished that they had been true to themselves instead of true to themselves instead of to others' ex expectations. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a whole bunch of people telling me, you better put down that work and start playing, young lady. You know, <laughs> we don't get expectations to play more. We get expectations to work more and to work harder and to succeed more and to get more money and all of that kind of stuff. But what if we were true to the inner child inside each of us and we were to just to play and have fun and not, not be pulled by the expectation to work more? to be able to relax and enjoy ourselves. So we're gonna demonstrate this today with a game because I like to play games, right? So we're gonna play a game. And if you would like to play Gratitude Toss with me, then I want your video to be on. And if you don't wanna play Gratitude Toss, turn your video off. And I'm gonna ask that we unmute everybody's mic and then everybody click on your mic and remute it so that you're not, on unless you're talking okay so every, i'm going to give everybody a minute to put your turn your video on if you want to play a game with me turn it off if you're like no games for me today which is okay you know people enjoy watching games just as much as they enjoy playing games all right looks like we've shifted over and hopefully the mics are unmuted and i'm going to hold on pull out something out of my pocket and this is it do you guys see that Oh, no, you don't. It's an invisible. It's an invisible. See? All right, there we go. All right. So we're going to play gratitude toss. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say something I'm grateful for. And I'm going to toss this ball to one of you guys. And you're going to catch it. And then 
when I, when I throw it to you, I'm going to tell you who I'm throwing it to because you won't be able to tell if I just throw it, right? Everybody will be catching it all at the same time. <laughs> and then when you catch it, you're going to say a reason you're grateful. You have to unmute your mic to do that. And then you're going to throw it to somebody else and you're going to say their name when you throw it to them. Does anybody have any questions about this game? Everybody understand the rules? All right, here we go. I'm going to throw it to Gordon. Catch it, Gordon, catch it. There you go. All right, unmute your mic. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to speak at this wonderful church today and to, to share this fun game with you guys. Unmute your mic and tell us why you're grateful, Gordon. Can't hear you. We are experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> it's okay, Gordon. If you want, you can type it into the chat if you don't have a mic that works and tell us why you're grateful in the chat. He's typing, folks. He's working on it. Da 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 I don't see the chat yet. I tell you what, Gordon. We're going to maybe move on to the next person and then we'll see what you chatted later. But Gordon, can you throw the ball to somebody else? You want to throw it back to me since you can't say who it is. Here, Gordon, throw it back to me. All right, here we go. All right, all right. I'm going to throw it to Benny. I got oh, good it. Good catch. Yeah, that was a one-handed catch with your arm, huh? Well, one and a half, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I am grateful for just the new understanding of divine and interacting and meditation and all of it together. So, cool. so now do I get to throw it? You get to throw it and name who you're throwing it to. I'm going to throw it to my buddy Floyd Farmer over there. Catch it, Floyd. It's coming. All right, he got it. He got it. All right, now, Benny, you turn off your video. And Gordon, you turn off your video so that we know who's already had it. And Floyd. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Why are you grateful today? Well, I'm just grateful to be here to enjoy this day with all of y'all. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. Do you want to throw the balls to somebody else? You'll have to tell us who you threw it to. I'm to toss it back to you. Oh, you can toss it. Oh. I didn't, it, you almost hit me in the face with it. Goodness gracious. Sorry, can't see <laughs> you. <laughs> That's okay, no problem. All right, I'm going to throw it to Rosa. Good thank catch, you. Rosa. Thank you, thank you. No, we can't do anything. No, she did. I oh. am grateful for my told you? family more than anything in the world except for my loving husband. Oh, wonderful. So you throw it to somebody and say who you're throwing it to, and then you turn your video off. I'm gonna send it on over to Della. You see, you can still hear them. Yeah, but catch it, Della. Oh, good yeah. catch. <laughs> Thank you, Rosa. I am grateful for the sun. This morning, I woke up just feeling so peaceful, so happy, just feeling really good inside about being alive and being here. So I'm grateful for the sun because it's been raining and, you know, cloudy and, but anyway. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm awesome. throw the ball to Catherine. Oh, is Catherine, is Catherine's not here today? Oh, she sorry. had to, yeah, she had another commitment she had to be at. So can you see the people whose video is still on? We have no, Mary Alice and Chrissy. Throw it to Andrea. Throw it to Andrea. Okay. 
Andrea's video was off, but she might want to turn her video on and catch it. I tell you what, can you could throw it to Mary Alice, Chrissy, Annette, Rose, or Peg. Those are the people left with their video on. M Mary Alice. Okay, there you go. Catch it, Mary Alice. You got it. Oh, good job. I knew you would want to play. You're the other most playful person at the church, just like me. You and me, you and me are the playful ones. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to get, hard to hold. It's active. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, cool. I can hear you. I know. Catch it, catch it. Don't let it get away. Uh, I'm okay. I'm grateful for my dear darling cat. And I'm going to throw this to Annette. Here comes Annette. Woo! Well, <laughs> Lucy's here with me too. She's, she's verbalizing <clears throat> her gratitude for um, barking. <laughs> so um, my gratitude, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, my gratitude goes out to Mary Alice. She is just an inspiration for what's been going on with her and her life. And I'm just grateful. And in that gratitude, the people I have had to had the um <clears throat> the um blessing to know with unity of fable it is wait, it is it is phenomenal so i am going to throw this back can, can I, 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 just a second can, wait let me mute your somebody. microphone hang on a sec yeah we need to mute microphones if we're not talking thank you yeah. there you okay. go annette <clears throat> what were you saying I was, okay. I was just going to say that we're going to mute the microphone and then right. I think <clears throat> there's a couple of people left. Turn your video off if you've already had the ball. Okay. This one is a double catch to Rose Vida and Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys can both go if you want and just y'all decide there who we has the ball first. Yeah. That was a good catch for the two of us. Yes. Yeah, so I want to did a good job. Thank you. I want to say I'm very grateful for all my Unity family, but I'm also really grateful that today we made our reservations for our New York trip. Yay. Yay. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> and, and let's see, who hasn't had it? Raise your hand if you haven't had it yet. I, there's some people who left their video on. I think Wait, you forgot Rich. Rich, you got to do oh, Rich. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh. It's a double. Yes, go for it. <laughs> I'm grateful for the light feeling I have since I retired on Friday. Yay. Yay. Oh, happy retirement to you. That's going to be wonderful. Thank you. Want to send you? Yeah. Okay, let's send it to We're going to send it to Chrissy. Okay, Chrissy, okay. you better catch it. Oh. <laughs> Good catch. Oh, it got bigger with Chrissy. This is a big one. Oh. I am just incredibly grateful. Um, there's so much I'm grateful for, but right, the first thing that comes to mind is just all of my amazing friends. Friends at Unity, friends across the United States, just friends in my life. I just feel so hugely blessed that I can share my silliness and my woes and my fears and my happiness. They're just always there. So thank you. So now I'm sending it back to Bonnie. All right. But Andrea turned her video on. So I'm wondering, Andrea, did you want to turn? I'm going to send it to you then for, and then you can throw it back to me. <laughs> Good catch. I got it. <laughs> With my one hand, <laughs> um, I am grateful, let's see, for having such a wonderful friend as Floyd, who's been by my side the entire time that I've needed him for this yucky shoulder surgery that I've had. And I don't know what I would have done without him. So it's helped make my recovery so much better. and grateful to see everyone again and and um, just to be able to connect with friends even if it is through a, a video it's it's just a wonderful thing there's no 
doubt about it. It got people out there that care about me and care about each other. And I think that's what it's all about. Yeah, so for sure. You. All right, you throw the ball back to me. Thank you. I'm gonna put it back in my pocket over here. <clears throat> I, I, I have a confession. There wasn't really a ball. Sorry, I tricked you guys. <laughs> But interestingly, even people whose video were off, I'm sure were engaged because what playfulness does is it engages us in life. And the more we can play and make life like a game, the more engaged we are in life and the more present we are. And remember, it's that present moment awareness that helps us to avoid the traps of the thoughts of the future and the thoughts of the past. There's a saying that thanking God before receiving a miracle is faith and thanking God after receiving a miracle is just plain good manners. So I would ask you to please start adopting a gratitude practice because that's another way to retrain our neural pathways. If I tell you, don't think of a pink elephant, whatever you do, don't think of a pink elephant with a long pink truck and big pink ears. What you probably are thinking of is a pink elephant. But if I tell you to think of the Eiffel Tower in Paris and how beautiful it is with the skyline of Paris, then you think of that instead of the pink elephant, right? So gratitude helps us to put our attention on something more positive than our automatic negative thoughts. So then we can retrain our neural pathways towards those more positive ways of thinking. So you can write down three new things you're grateful for every day. You can take a picture of three things you're grateful for every day, or you can just cultivate gratitude throughout your day. I'm so grateful that the snow's melting. I'm so grateful that I have these friends that I can hang out with. I'm so grateful my football team won, whatever it is, right? So gratitude is another one of the tools that we teach at Unity, but also that we teach in counseling. So speaking of gratitude, I wanted to end by expressing my deep, deep heartfelt gratitude for this Unity community because it's this community that has supported me through all of the hard times in my life and all of the difficult experiences I've traveled through. It is here that I have grown to be a confident and happy and peace-filled person. And it is here that I have been loved so much that I have truly learned to love myself. Thank you so very much. Namaste. Thank you, Bonnie. So um, if anybody, Nancy Neal said, we on Zoom are having a ball. <laughs> if we just had a ball, which I did, <laughs> let's do this. Let's give thanks. Much gratitude, Bonnie, for your message. Uh-oh, something just happened here. Let me just um, fix this. So, um, hmm. Anna, you accidentally pushed screen share. So I'm gonna ask if you can take it down. Let me see. Um, there, thank you, good job. All right. Um, thanks, Bonnie. That was beautiful. I appreciate that. Yay. All right, I'm gonna screen share now and we're going to take this into prayer time um hopefully hang on there we go so your um chat box is open and this is when we we um let those names those challenges we let them go and 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 release them to our prayer team who will pray over them and you can do that in your chat box and our prayer coordinator will send them to us. And as we do this, we can sing. Your prayer is my prayer. Your prayer is my prayer. Your prayer is my prayer. Prayer, my prayer to 
Your prayer is my prayer. 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 My prayer too. For those of you who can see those names, hold them in your heart. Filled with love and gratitude, entered into that peace portal. And if you're on uh, Facebook Live, you can email us your prayers, unityfay at svcglobal.net. So let's hold them in our hearts. Your prayer is my prayer. Mm -hmm. Your prayer is my prayer. Your prayer is my prayer, my prayer to you. We give thanks for this moment and we release those prayers. And so it is. All right, our next, um, yay. I'm going to set this down. I've had a lot of fun working on guitar this week. It's been a while. So for those of you who would like to uh, support us, Unity of Faith, well, and all we do, and I think we do a lot. We have a wonderful, wonderful group, community, and um, your donations, your love through your donations helps to keep us going. And those are the ways you can do it. You see that on the screen. Uh, Venmo, Unity of Fayetteville at Unity Fay 10. And then you can mail us or you can do PayPal or credit card. So whatever it is, we give thanks for that. And now let's say together that which is coming forth by all those different methods. Together, this is the bounty of God. We send it forth to do its good works, blessed with wisdom, love, and joy. Mm, and so it is. Thanks for hanging out here. We're going to um, take care of some announcements now. Um, let's see if this will switch. There we go. So I want to, uh, again, I said gratitude for Mary Alice and so her significant other, her husband, left this earthly plane and we are having a, um, two memorials to celebrate John Larson and his life. So this coming Saturday, February 12th at 3 p.m. at Unity of Fayetteville, you all are invited to come support and be with and learn about John and, and um, be there for our Mary Alice as she moves into a different kind of world now. And then the next Saturday, February 19th at 1 p.m., you're welcome to, to um, join on Zoom if that makes you feel better or if that's more comfortable for you. You see the RSVP so you can get the Zoom link. L-A-R-S-U-M-A-K at gmail.com. And this information will be there tomorrow in your uh, constant contact. So look for that. Next Sunday, John and I will be doing the service. He'll be doing the music. And um, I'm excited about that. We have learned how to do music. I've learned how to do music live. I'm really excited about that. So next week, it's a, above all, love. And then you just have a little bit of time to get with Rosa Roubaix about her COI course. You can see that information there. Um, bringing the most important part of you, the I am, into your daily living. And you can see her phone number. That's 479. One of these days, I'm going to remember to change that. 479-715-2092 if you'd like to be in that class. Thanks, Rosa, for putting that out there for our community. 
And next week, uh, we don't have our Unikids on Zoom or in class just yet, but we're going to give them their Valentine treats after our service next week, be around noon at Unity of Fayetteville, and uh, I'll be there too. We're putting together those treats this week. And I want to thank Audra for helping to make that possible. So we're not going to have Sisters in Spirit this coming Saturday. And hopefully we can be back in March. The numbers of COVID patients are going down and the hospitalizations are going down. So we'll have another conversation with our board of trustees about if we are ready to return in person. And, and you'll know soon. We'll let you know how it's going to be. But no, Sisters in Spirit. And remember the donations when the road's clear, <laughs> you can leave them in our free pantry at the curb at Unity of Fayetteville. So that is still something people need very much. So together we're going to say this and let's remember this prayer, affirming these truths is for ourselves, for all of us here today um, on this Zoom together on the Facebook, those who will be watching later and for all beings, we say together, the light of God surrounds us, we are light. The love of God enfolds us, we are love. The power of God protects us, we are power. The presence of God watches over us, we are presence. Wherever we are, God is. We are divine. So one thing I have not yet learned how to do and probably won't do is learn how to play. Learn how to play the peace song on the guitar. <laughs> so we're going to do it this way. Right away, Jeremy. I want to thank all of you in Facebook Live for joining us today, and I am going to uh, let you go and enjoy this day because it's a beautiful sunny day here in Northwest Arkansas. So goodbye to you. And there's going to be someone who says something.